enough electoral votes, more than 270, more than enough to become the 44th president of the United States. He will be the first African-American president. Of Every time you stay home, someone is making a decision about you, making decisions about the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food your kids eat, and how much money you bring home every two weeks. So every time you sit out an election, every time you don't show up because you think it doesn't matter, someone else is happy that you didn't show up so they can make that decision for you. Vote. Vote. This is how all my people feel, but we got to learn. We complained enough. Let me change it up. Everything I just said, everybody I know think the same way. See, they don't want to see us vote, and we never do, so we see the same thing. But all our votes really do count, and they'll never really let it show. So now I'm finna break it down, because if I don't, you will probably never know. First thing first, you know back in middle school when they taught us, it was three branches of the government. We forgot it when we got older. It's the judicial, the legislative, and executive. But all we know is the executive. That's the mayor or the governor and the president. Now, none of them three people make no laws. They just be checking them. The laws come to their desk and all they do is say no or yes to it. So when the news station tried to tell us that Barack Obama couldn't put us on, we was all Saudi at Obama when it was the Congress members out along. We got to focus on the legislative branch. Yeah, they the ones that make the laws. Yeah, they the ones right how much food stamp money you get on the car. But when people that wanted to help us, wanted the job, I know they probably lost because we ain't even know their name. We ain't know their face. We ain't know it all. So the Congress or the State House, that's legislative they make laws so what we want from the president is what they do okay y'all see they election every two years but we don't never even go to those the congress they can raise minimum wage but we ain't even really know it though so you know how back in 08 when we all voted for obama we was all supposed to go back in 2010 and vote for the congress because they the ones make child support laws they the ones choose if your kids at school get the eat steak or corn dogs the state house make the court cost so if the country failed then you can't say it's them it's your fault because y'all ain't know the vote for Congress members that was for y'all and they don't gotta leave after four years and we just let them sit see they don't want to tell you this they want you to focus on the president now the third branch is the judicial that's judges they the reason why John Crawford and Trey Vine had justice so when Meek Mill got locked up just for popping willies we blame the judge and not the city when they let her get voted in cause they ain't know who to vote against imagine life on the other side roads better schools better everybody get their license back grocery store food better custody of your kids Back. Homeless people get new shelters. If we gon' fix the U.S., we gotta start with them two letters. Me and you. Somebody told us that the government wanna keep us broke. But the only reason why those people in the government is cause we ain't vote. And I ain't talking about the president. I'm talking about the ones we ain't know. See, they was gonna try to keep us off, but it's gonna hurt them when they see the pros. Imagine living with a pain so unpredictable. So sharp. It feels like your body is being torn apart from the inside yet. The world around you remains unaware. This is the reality for millions battling sickle cell disease, where a pain crisis can strike at any moment. It's not just the pain that makes this journey unbearable. The lack of understanding from healthcare workers who overlook the severity of symptoms to politicians who don't prioritize the resources we need. The struggle is more than just physical. In today's video, we're diving into the overlooked realities of sickle cell warriors, the silent fight for proper care, and why this conversation is long overdue. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are continuing our deep dive into how presidential candidates have impacted our community directly. Today's focus is something close to my heart sickle cell disease, a condition that disproportionately affects the black community. We'll be reviewing what each administration has done to support or hinder those battling this disease. But first, let's take a closer look at Trump's era. Before diving in, one thing that has always struck me as alarming is Trump's refusal to reveal his complete medical history. A red flag for transparency, in my opinion. But more on that in my next video. For now, let's focus on what happened, or didn't happen, during his presidency regarding sickle cell. While Trump didn't directly target sickle cell patients or the black community, his policies certainly had an impact. Let's break this down. 1. Healthcare Policies and Sickle Cell Affordable Care Act ACA Repeal Attempts The ACA was critical for many with pre-existing conditions like sickle cell. Trump repeatedly tried to repeal this law. 
If he had succeeded, millions of Americans, especially those in the black community dealing with conditions like sickle cell, could have lost access to affordable health care. Sickle cell patients rely heavily on consistent care, and the ACA ensured they weren't denied coverage based on their condition. Had it been dismantled, the sickle cell community would have faced a significant crisis. Medicaid cuts. Medicaid is a lifeline for many black Americans, particularly those with sickle cell disease who may struggle to afford private insurance. Trump's efforts to cut Medicaid funding put those individuals at risk. Medicaid helps cover treatments and hospital stays that are often unaffordable for sickle cell patients. Any reduction in this safety net would have made managing the disease even more difficult. Deepening the disparity in healthcare access to token legislative efforts. I must give credit where it's due Trump did sign the sickle cell disease and other heritable blood disorders research. Surveillance Prevention and Treatment Act, asterisk in 2018. This act authorized federal funds to research the disease and improve the collection of data on affected communities. While this was a positive step, his broader health care policies seemed out of sync with this gesture, undercutting his support for the sickle cell community by weakening the very programs they depend on. 3. Disparities in Broader Health Care Investment Despite signing the ACE, Trump's administration largely overlooked the racial health disparities that play a huge role in who gets access to treatment for diseases like sickle cell. Many of his public health initiatives fail to address the unique needs of black Americans. By cutting funding from public health programs and rolling back health care protections, Trump essentially made it harder for underserved communities to get the care they need. So while Trump didn't act directly against sickle cell patients, his policies disproportionately harmed them through health care cuts and a lack of focus on racial health disparities. Now, you might wonder, what about the current administration? Well, let me reference something Roland Martin discussed on his show when he asked Vice President Harris's team to provide a list of what the Biden-Harris administration has done for the black community. The results were, at least to me, more than I expected. But first, let's stay on top of Trump's policies and their impact on our community's health. We can't overlook the importance of health care in ensuring our communities can thrive. And while Trump did take a step with the sickle cell legislation, his broader attempts to repeal the ACA and reduce Medicaid access would have set us back significantly. These decisions would have especially hurt the sickle cell community which depends heavily on accessible and affordable health care for ongoing treatment. In my next video, I'll dive into the medical histories of the candidates and explain why transparency matters, especially when making decisions that affect public health. See, here's the thing right here, um, Renita. Um, they, they, they laid out again, this, this Vice President Harris will deliver for black men. Uh, and so it lays out a variety of things uh, in here. First and foremost, um, look, I was there in Detroit. I was there in Atlanta. She went to Atlanta multiple times. She went to Charlotte, uh, actually talking about this economic opportunity tour. And so then you go through here. So you heard uh, the things that we already talked about, launching a national health equity initiative focused on black men that addresses sickle cell disease, diabetes, mental health, prostate cancer, and other health challenges. And this portion the affect them. And so then you go through here uh, and you see uh, these things. You look at uh, the issues here where you talk about this uh, $20,000 forgivable uh, loan for black entrepreneurs. And so then uh, when you go through here and you begin to see uh, a partnership with Small Business Administration, expanding access to bank accounts, uh, again, uh, where you talk about... Um, uh, and maybe black men and other workers of profit when company executives profit, uh, expanding pathways for black men to good paying jobs, whether or not they have a college degree, uh, and on and on and on. Now, I, 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 I say all of that. I say all of that because again, those things are good because again, what black folks are saying is, uh, I want to hear from you in terms of, in terms of, uh, what you're going to do. But when I think about hashtag, we did that. And that's the way I use here. Here we go to my iPad because 
I asked the White House, tell me exactly what you actually accomplished in three and a half years for African Americans. I need everybody missing them. I'm just going to go through this here. So they, they sent me achieved lowest black unemployment rate on record. Created 2.4 million jobs for black workers as of August 2024. That the 400,000 black children out of poverty by increased staff benefits through updating the thrifty food plan. Who wants to actually cut the SNAP program? Republicans. Grew black American business ownership at the fastest rate in over three decades. Triple the number of SBA back loans to black owned businesses. Awarded a record $10 billion in federal contracts to black owned small businesses in 2023. Invested more than 16 billion in HBCUs. Secured a $900 increase of the maximum Pell Grant award. Largest increase in the past 10 years. And here's a piece. That Pell Grant money is actually in addition to the HBCU money. Then, um, secure, uh, approved the cancellation of almost 170 billion in student loan debt. Rooted out racial bias in home appraisals and closed the black white home valuation disparity gap by 40%. And you hear me talk to Vice President Harris about that. Reduce mortgage insurance premiums for FHA loans, saving 76,000 black households $900 a year. Cut costs for high speed internet to 5.5 million black households with the affordable connectivity program. Distributed $2.2 billion in financial assistance to over 43,000 farmers who experience discrimination. And of course, Stephen Miller, uh, Trump's a uh, white nationalist sued to stop, uh, the money that was allocated to black and Hispanic farmers. Led a historically equitable economic recovery, black wealth, even after adjusting for inflation, is up 60% to pre-pandemic levels, the largest increase on record. Any health disparities, uh, it says right here, uh, lower premium costs by an average of $800 for millions of Americans, increasing black enrollment in Affordable Care Act coverage by 95%, more than 1.7 million people since 2020. That specifically impacts black men and their health. Lord monthly premiums for health insurance capped the cost of insulin at $35 and out of pocket drug costs at $2,000 for those in Medicare. Announced the first 10 prescription drugs for Medicare price negotiation, saving some $1.5 billion. Made sickle cell disease the first focus of the new Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services model. Expanded Medicare, Medicaid postpartum coverage from 60 days to 12 months in 46 states and Washington, D.C., covering 700,000 more women in the year of childbirth. Secure an additional $1.5 billion for a head start. Delivered a billion dollars to more than 40 states to increase the number of school-based mental health professionals. Signed two executive orders directing the federal government to address inequality. Protected Black History is American History. Signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act. They designated Springfield 1908 Race Ride and Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley National Monuments. Signed the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. Classified lynching for the first time as a federal hate crime. Work to protect the sacred right to vote through executive actions. Continued calls for legislation. Appointed the first black woman to the Supreme Court. They have more black women federal circuit court, uh, and more, and more black women to federal circuit courts than all previous presidents combined and more black judges appointed in a single term more than any other president in American history. Signed an executive order on police reform when Republican, when city Republicans blocked the George Floyd Justice Act. Signed into law the first bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Secure $350 million in funding for specific, funding specifically for community violence intervention programs. Pardon thousands of Americans under federal and DC law for simple possession of marijuana. Help bring crime to its lowest level in 50 years, low of it during any year of the prison administration, and was not in here, I'll add, that was one parents and practice investigation, Renita, under Trump, 12 under Biden Harris. Donald Trump executed 13 people in six months on the federal level, zero under Biden Harris. Then, when you look at the Department of Justice, 
mortgage uh, discrimination or uh, settlements with various people, putting former cops in prison for beating black people, jailers and, uh, and wardens, exact same thing, investigations and action against uh, various juvenile programs in Texas, as well as investigating uh, prison conditions in Mississippi, South Carolina, Georgia, and on. Now, my criticism of the Biden Harris administration is that this stuff was not constantly touted over the last three and a half years. But I can't act like it didn't happen.